do this you can get this right simple now let's go to note number eight note eight which is the retained income the retained income the retained income will include the opening balance at the beginning of the year opening balance at the beginning of the year right and then you also include the net profit after tax right remember whenever a company makes profit they come the profit must go to the shareholders but if it is retained it is included under the retained income hence we include it now it also includes it includes dividends but before dividends remember we bought back shares so shares bought back so if you could remember the shares were bought back at five rand but only out of this five friends, only two rand, one, two rand, one twenty-five cents was for the share, was from the shareholders' capital. It means in order to get, you must write there how, how many shares they were right, ten thousand shares. You must write it here, ten thousand shares bought back. In order to get whether they were bought back at what amount, you're going to say five friends minus two rand one twenty-five, because that's what remaining from the retained income so you're going to say this multiplied by 10,000 and you get a daily let's see you get 38,750 38, right then you have an amount here and an amount here so this is also subtracted from the retained income because you are giving that shareholder that selling the shares to add to assess the company you are giving him or her the income that that was being retained all along when he was an existing shareholder to this company and then after this you'll be having dividends Right. Your dividends will include your interim dividends and final dividend. Right. Dividends obviously you'll have to subtract them. They reduce the retained income. In other words, this dividend is subtracted from the profit. Part of the profit that was made here is distributed as dividends. Will remain which with what we retain. Right. I explain this guys. Now, this is interim final dividends. After that, then you'll have your balance at end. Balance at end. At the end, which is at the date 28 February 2020. That's your balance at the end. Now, guys, that, that's the those are the important notes that you'll have so this balance at the end and this balance at the end you put them here here balance at end, balance at end right the most important thing are the notes of this these one these notes are highly important guys you must make sure you do know them after this after having our equity and liabilities then okay this the total of this you'll put it here equity then you have our liabilities just like assets our liabilities they are divided into two non-current liabilities and current and the only non-current liability we'll be dealing with in credit health is loan or mortgage bonds right this is loan which is which will be paid in a period of more than 12 months right you have your non-current liabilities then you also have your your current liabilities so this will be the total here you have your current liabilities under current liabilities guys you'll have your trade and other payables or trading other purples 
this is where you'll have what it include the creditors control it's actually note number eight it will include your creditors control your accrued expenses and your income received in advance in advance right right you'll also have your short term short term loan your short term loan is the loan that you've repaid in a period of less than 12 months right after having your short term loan you're going to have your bank overdraft your bank overdraft you know that bank overdraft is a liability if we withdraw more than what we have in the bank it becomes a liability guys then you also have what we call shareholders for dividends remember that shareholders for dividends this shareholders for dividends is from this the final dividend i told you that the final dividend is declared every dividend before it's it's paid it becomes declared after it becomes declared then you pay it later so the final dividend is issued at the end end of the year so it won't be paid during this financial year it will pay it in the next financial year hence it becomes a liability to us now after having your shareholders for dividends you'll be having source income tax please note that as i made an example earlier on SAS income tax it becomes a liability if we owe SAS the, the money, right? Becomes a liability if we owe SAS the money. If SAS owes us the money, then it will be included here under trading under receivables. SAS income tax. So meaning if we having a debit balance on this account it will be included here if we have in a credit balance it will be included here then you'll get your total equity and liabilities right your total equity and liabilities and as you all know this must equal to this Okay, so that's it guys for a balance sheet which includes company concepts i hope this video will be helpful to you thank you